I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, joined by Democratic Congress member Jared Moskowitz. Congressman Moskowitz, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me back. So yesterday's oversight committee hearing, where do we begin? It was going to be this performative stunt by the MAGA Republicans to hold Hunter Biden in contempt, but it quickly went off the rails. Hunter Biden showed up, said, I'm here. I previously said I would testify publicly under oath, no limitations attached. You MAGA Republicans want a secret deposition. Let's do this in public. Let's do this right now. I want to hear it from your perspective. What went down? What was your reaction to it? And you stepped in in a big way. You had graphics and you pushed back hard against what those MAGA Republicans were going to do. Talk to us about it. Well, I mean, look, first of all, they're doing something that has never been done before. They're literally trying to hold someone in contempt while they're there at the hearing trying to testify. It was pretty wild. Um, you know, no one knew Hunter was going to be there, although Hunter did have an aggressive strategy <clears throat> a couple weeks ago when he held that press conference uh, the day of his deposition. Look, the chairman, had, you know, the chairman stepped in it uh, several times before this hearing. The chairman because he does interview after interview into the same sort of bubble, goes on TV and says, you know, Hunter Biden can come to the committee. We want to take his deposition. So he can either, we can do it either in a public hearing or we can do it in a deposition, whichever he chooses. And Hunter was like, okay, I choose. I choose a public hearing. And then all of a sudden, you know, Comer had like one of those burps where like the liquid comes up and it burns, right? Because he's put his foot in his mouth. OK, and then all of a sudden it was like backpedaling for the last couple of weeks. Oh, no, no, no. It's got to be in a, the basement in a dark room. So, you know, where they never release the transcript and they tell people what Hunter said, which is a complete lie. And they can continue this fantasy that somehow Joe Biden had something to do with this when there's no evidence. And their own constitutional scholar witnesses have said Joe Biden. Uh, there's no evidence on, on, on Joe Biden. So anyways, Hunter shows up. Comer turns like he's seen a ghost. Uh, you know, he goes to Nancy Mace first, you know, and, and we're off to the races, races. And the thing turns out to be like a WWE Royal Rumble where everyone's just rushing, r rushing into the ring. And so, you know, you know, Representative Mace talked about how Hunter had uh, had no balls and he was scared of them. And I'm thinking to myself, huh, that's strange. That's not something I would say to someone who's literally here calling my bluff. So when, when I when she did that and I saw him staring us all in the face, I was like, well, he's here. He doesn't seem too scared, right? You want to hear from him? Who wants to hear from Hunter Biden? Swear him in right now. Let's start the deposition. And none of them, none of them wanted to hear uh, from from Hunter Biden. But then they then they were like, well, but you know, he defied a subpoena. He, they went to this holier than thou thing. And, and, and by the way, he's not defied a subpoena. He has agreed to everything the chairman has asked for. Answer all the questions. Unlimited time. Not going to make it. Not going to take any privileges. The only accommodation he asked for, which is standard, is that he wants to do it in a public setting with cameras so the American people can hear from him. And the Republicans are like, oh, no, no, transparency is bad. You know, you can't hear from Hunter Biden. Even Ted Cruz came out and said, do it in a public hearing. I mean, Chairman Comer has lost Ted Cruz uh, on uh, on this argument. It's why one of my Republican colleagues said, this is why we don't we shouldn't pick our chairman based on how much money they raise. We should pick our chairman based on based on ability. And so I just reminded the Republicans when they got on their holier than thou thing about how many of them defied subpoenas in the last Congress. And so, you know, the, but they, you know, in their bubble, they pretend like this stuff doesn't happen. If you want to know why they look like they're caught off guard, well, when you live in an area where you don't have to deal with actual facts, right? And then you get into a hearing where all of a sudden you're getting incoming and you're not used to that because you go into favorable environments who ask favorable questions all the time. You know, that's why they're off their game. It's because they're not used to they're not used to that. And so what I've been doing, Ben, is I've been preparing for these hearings. Sometimes I prepare for things that I never present. Right. I make boards that I never use because, you know, some of them are over the line. But I, I knew Marjorie yesterday was going to bring up those hunter picks again. I, I just had a feeling in my mind she couldn't help herself because what would happen is the hearing would go off the rails. The Republicans would be losing the hearing. And all of a sudden she would go bring back, the, you know, a, a, an oldie and would start going to the, the photos that were found on this mysterious, <clears throat> mysterious laptop, which they've still not shown anybody publicly. And so, you know, I was I was ready for all of this yesterday. You were ready for it. And 
hashtag Marjorie Taylor Peen was actually the number two trend in all of the United States of America because she continues to show these nude photos of Hunter Biden in all of these committee hearings. It's like really depraved and weird, but you yeah, were in, ready in the same for that. Hearing, in the same hearing where they talk about the big guy, it's funny that she shows those photos. I want to show you, th these are some- Sorry, that was, that some was too photos. easy. That was too easy. <laughs> these are some photos that you posted after the hearing. This is uh, James Comer planning a Hunter Biden hearing versus how the hearing was actually going. This was something that uh, that you posted right uh, right here. Um, you then uh, We then saw that famous photo of James Comer with his hand in his face right there. Um, and then yeah, look, I will- look, look, look like he had a little bit of a headache. Oh. And, and let me show you right now this clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene where she did take out this photo. We'll watch it and then we'll take a look at what you did in response to that. But first, let's play this clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene. And it's marked Mr. out. Chairman, point of parliamentary inquiry. Out, point, showing point proof of, parliamentary uh, inquiry, Mr. Proof Chairman, of Man okay. Act okay. violations. Uh, um, Democrats should, should okay, not be okay. offended by pictures uh, that Chairman, black out. Have things. I been recognized? Uh, they should be offended by point of parliamentary and inquiry. trafficking. Mr. Sorry, Chairman, but state your point. Thank you kindly, Mr. Chairman. On July 26, I sent you a letter about the last time this happened when the general lady uh, introduced uh, before this committee without any notice to uh, anyone uh, nude photos, pornographic uh, images that were completely irrelevant to the purpose uh, of the hearing itself. And uh, my question to you is, are members allowed to simply put up sensationalistic, voyeuristic, pornographic images if they're not relevant to the actual object of the legislative proceeding? But, I want a parliamentary ruling well, on that. Mr. Askin, that's probably part of the questioning for for Mr. Biden, violations of the Mann Act. Ms. Green's led on that issue. No, no, this is a these question are already, of the rules these of the have already, These pictures have already been entered into the record. So, in other words, you have accepted the idea that members can introduce irrelevant, I sexually based, how, 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 is this, how is this irrelevant? Well, well, how does it relate I, to Joe Biden? How, is, how does it relate to? Uh, We're not doing well, a criminal investigation of Hunter no, Biden. We've point, had, point, we've point had of order, Mr. Chairman. Point, point of order. And of course, we previously seen Marjorie Taylor Greene going around and, I guess, holding these meetings with constituents. And one of the things she does is she goes and has these meetings with constituents. She brings a cardboard cutout of Donald Trump, and then she grabs the cardboard genitals of Donald Trump in front of everybody. Here, play this clip as well. There we go. There we go. And then I got to do one more thing. I always do this. I just love this guy. Oh, so yeah. Wow. So you held up a poster in response to that. You were ready of Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. W why did you hold that up, Congressman? Well, again, uh, I mean, it, she's over there giving a speech, you know, opening the door about pedophiles and grooming and kids and young girls. And I'm thinking to myself, See, they, they just live in a bubble. Uh, and so, OK, we we want to we want to play this game. No problem. Let me let me bring out the one of just a dozen photos of Donald Trump and and, and Epstein. And as soon as that photo came out. You should have looked at the Republicans. They were like ostriches. Each one, like their head immediately went below their desk because, you know, they're all out there attacking Epstein for other people. And they forget that Donald Trump and him were super close. In fact, Donald Trump commented that, oh, Jeffrey likes them really young. Well, how would he know that? Well, how would he know? Well, well some people are saying, Ben, that, you know, he was there. Uh, and, and so, yeah, look, if that if that's what they're going to do, OK, I know Democrats want to be better than them and I, I, I want to be better than them and I don't want to sink the hearings into this. But unfortunately, we have to fight fire with fire and, and I'm not going to let them do these hearings where they pretend like the guy that they basically kneel to and take commands from and is in charge of their entire party. Right. Doesn't pal around and didn't pal around with a pedophile. I'm not going to let them get away with that 
uh, a, a, as they as they try to paint Democrats uh, a, as as something different. And what I'm hoping is that what I'm hoping Marjorie and these others see is that when they want to go off the rails and they want to, you know, go be- below decorum, no problem. I'm going to be there every single time prepared. Again, sometimes you're not going to see these boards that I make because, you know, we will have a regular hearing and I don't need to show them. But I'm going to be ready. And I think that's what they're not prepared for. They're not prepared for Democrats to be this aggressive, this in their face. Um, uh, uh, you know, and that's what I think a lot of the members of oversight led by Jamie Raskin uh, on our side are doing this year uh, is that we're giving them a taste of their own medicine. And, and what we're exposing is not only can they not handle it, not only are a lot of them like snowflakes, but, but also it's setting them off their game so much. And it turns out they're not very good at this uh, as, as we're exposing hearing after hearing. Well, they're afraid to hold the hearings, right? I mean, that's why you have James Comer and the MAGA Republicans run to Fox or Newsmax or whatever their right wing bubble echo chamber media. James Comer went on CNN with Tapper a couple of weeks ago and it was an unmitigated disaster. And then he ran like a wet blanket back to like Newsmax. He's like, well, I'm never doing that again. And here, by the way, this is the direct quote from Donald Trump in 2002 about Jeffrey Epstein. I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. And then Donald Trump around this time period would go on Howard Stern, and he would brag about walking into the dressing room of teenage girls while they were naked. I mean, we have this on audio recording and Donald Trump said because he would own these pageants, he would be inspecting the young teenage girls. Here, play this clip. We have it on audio. What you could also say is the owner of the pageant, it's your obligation to do that. So so you have done that. Well, I'll tell you the funniest is that I'll go backstage before a show and everyone's getting dressed and ready and everything else and, you know, no men are anywhere. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant, and therefore I'm inspecting it. You know, I'm inspecting. Right, I right. want to make sure that you're like everything doctor, is good. You're, you're there. Yeah, the dress is, is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible-looking women. And so I sort of get away with things. Talking about 14- and 15-year-old girls. That's By their the pers- way, t- tell us why you bought the pageant without telling us why you bought the pageant. Okay? I mean, good Lord. And my issue... There's lots of issues with that, obviously, but but my biggest issue right now with that is the hypocrisy of it all. As we hear Republicans day in and day out talking about books, you know, in 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 libraries that need to be banned. And again, I'm sure there are some of them that don't belong there. But the guy they want to, who's the head of their party that they want to nominate back, has every problem in this space that you could ever have. And and that's why I've been. I said yesterday, I said, oh, when a Democrat does it, it's a crime, but when Trump does it, it's just fine just fine. And so James Comer, not too pleased about the way it it went. Um, I think you posted this funny image too. It says James Comer planning a Hunter hearing versus how the hearing is going right there. Oh, Pop-Tart mean. Oh, by the way, let, side conversation for a second. I mean, was that Pop-Tart thing like the greatest thing you've ever seen? He pops out of a toaster. I mean, it was brilliant. And here, by the way, is another photo I think we have of James Comer right here. No, that's not James Comer. Hold on. This is that's the photo of, of of James Comer right there. And here's James Comer. He went on he went on right wing media, and here's what he had to say about you. Play this clip. Was he on Saved by the Bell? That show. He looks so familiar. Um, uh, Congressman, uh, uh, why not let him, why not that. let him speak? Why not? Why didn't you let him speak? Moscow itself. Well, well, that Moskowitz, well, look, Moskowitz has less credibility than George Santos had when he was a member of Congress. He's the new George Santos. But look at the. What's your response to that? I mean, his brain literally looked like it was going to leap from his skull trying to figure out how do I respond to this? And he came up with George Santos. Perhaps maybe it's because we're both Jewish. Um, I, you know, whatever. I, I mean, Comer's called me little Moskowitz. He's called me a Smurf. Now, now I'm the, the, the new George Santos. Uh, whatever, James. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, here's what he tells me week in and week out. He's losing. And if he wasn't losing, he wouldn't talk about me, but he talks about me because he's losing. And so, uh, you know, look, we'll, we'll continue to have these failure theater hearings. You're right. We're having a lot less of them because they've been going pretty poorly. Um, uh, and look, it's cause they don't have the evidence. 
There's no evidence that Joe Biden did anything wrong. Um, and, and that's why, you know, but they're trying to drag this out. It's about the poll numbers again. They, they've admitted that several times. That, oh, look at Joe Biden's poll numbers. It's direct correlation to our investigation. And by the way, Hunter, you know, has been indicted. He's got legal issues that he's got to deal with. No, no one is out there, you know, saying that Hunter doesn't have to deal with that. I mean, he's got to deal with that. That's no one's above the law, period. Uh, but but yesterday was just a complete debacle because the chairman literally invited him to testify publicly. And then, you know, the chairman wants to uninvite him to the birthday party. And meanwhile, you had uh, Speaker Mike Johnson enter into a bipartisan deal, which I was happy about. I was like, OK, well, refer to refer to him by his chosen name, which is Moses. He's like Moses. Moses. I was going to say Maga Mike. Uh, but, uh, but no, but remember, he, Moses. he compared himself to Moses. So Speaker Moses entered into this bipartisan deal. And for all of the criticisms that I've had of him, I said, you know what? That was a responsible thing to do. That's what leaders do. And I was waiting to make a video saying that was good work. But I knew what was going to follow. The Freedom Caucus members then went into his uh, office today and probably delivered orders from Donald Trump, but told them that they were going to oust him or remove him. So now they're going to go back on a deal that was made with the Senate on a bipartisan basis. And it, it's pretty easy. Like this isn't complicated stuff in my view to connect the dots here. You had Donald Trump go on of all things, it's called Lindell TV, and said that he wants to crash the economy. He recognizes- You get a free pillow for every episode you're on. It's very nice. Exactly. I he recognizes- I, I haven't gotten any pillows from you, Ben. I, we'll, 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 we'll see about that. I haven't started a pillow company yet. Don't um, send me any pillows. I have to like declare it. It's just a whole thing. <laughs> no, no, no pillows. No pillows being sent. Instead, I will send you via this digital feed what Donald Trump said on Lindell TV, where Donald Trump gave the order. I think he said he wants to crash the economy. Donald That's Trump right. said that the economy is doing well now, which he claims are off of his fumes, as he says. But against all odds, President Biden has gotten inflation under control. There still needs to be a lot of work there, but he's at least put it under control. The All the economic indicators that are traditionally used are pointing now in a positive direction. And from an economic standpoint, this could be a really good year, which Donald Trump says is bad for him and he wants to see it destroyed. So he, play he, this clip. He, yeah, play it. When there's a crash, I hope it's going to be during this next 12 months. Because I don't want to be Herbert Hoover. The one president, I just don't want to be Herbert Hoover. So what do you make of that? I mean, he's saying First he's, all, he's already him. he's already up there with Herbert Hoover because I think after Herbert Hoover, he had the most job losses in his four years than anybody else. Um, but here's what I would say. He, he did this last time. During his reelection, he said that he, 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 he wanted all sorts of bad, during his first election, he wanted all sorts of bad things to happen to help himself out. So he's telling the seniors in my district that he wants all of their 401ks to crash so that he can win. And, and by the way, this is what Chris Christie has told everybody. This is about Donald Trump. He doesn't care about you. He only cares about himself. And, and like, a, like the world's best QVC blender salesman, he has just sold this bag of goods to everybody. Uh, and so, yeah, he, he wants the economy to crash. He wants to hurt, you know, seniors. He wants to hurt families. He wants to hurt the country uh, just, just to serve himself. And then his attorneys go into the second highest court of the land and say things like, by the way, Donald Trump could kill his political opponents and totally get away with it. No criminal liability. I mean, this is what, I mean, the, look, the one thing that you have to respect about what Donald Trump is doing is we don't have to guess what he might do. We don't have to guess on who he is, and, and we don't have to make up stuff. He is telling everybody exactly who he is, exactly what he's going to do, and exactly how it's going to be. We just have to listen and believe him because, look, this is the sequel. How many movies was the sequel better than the original? The only one is maybe The Godfather Part Two, which was a mob movie, okay? And so... This is going to be a disaster, and we need Americans to wake up. You can be upset with Joe Biden. You could be disappointed with Joe Biden. I, you know, we could disagree about that. But to turn back to a presidency that was a complete failure, that wants to be a dictator, that looks at Vladimir Putin and says, just like that, uh, I can't even, we, we can't even sit here and discuss what it would be like because in the 200 plus history 
of this of this republic. We have never experienced what Donald Trump wants to bring. He wants to be a king. He wants to be a king, and he's telling people that uh, I'm going to be a king. Final word to all the Midas Mighty out there, the American people out there. First and foremost, I want to tell all of them to subscribe to your YouTube channel because I know you're actually starting your own YouTube channel where you've been posting your videos. So you can just check out Jared Moskowitz, Congress member Moskowitz's YouTube channel because people have been asking, where do I see his videos? And you're, I know you're going to be posting with more regularity there as well. And I like going to your YouTube channel. So check that out. What, what else do you say to the um, American people right there, though, who who are seeing, though, finally, Democrats are pushing back. There, there does feel, at least, despite everything that I think the media was trying to do and both sides this and horse race this, I feel there's some good momentum right now, you know, even the first 10, 12 days of, of January. W where, where do you see this all going? Well, I mean, look, one of the things that we got Democrats got to get better at, but I think we're getting there is messaging. We got a message. And and look, you know, there's there if the White House isn't going to get on board with some of that messaging, then Democrats in Congress can do it. We got a message. We got to talk. That's the one thing the Republicans, especially Donald Trump, is good at is just messaging, messaging over and over and over again, understanding that tomorrow is a new a new news day and they don't remember what happened a week ago and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Uh, and be aggressive uh, and make it somewhat entertaining in the messaging so that we can keep people's attention with all the incoming and all the distractions that people have in their daily lives, like, you know, their kids are paying rent and their jobs. Uh, and so I think you're seeing Democrats really giving Republicans a taste of their own medicine and Republicans not being able uh, to deal with it. And so, look, I don't know. This year is going to be something like we've never seen before. Um, I mean, it is going to get very strange and very weird and very scary at certain times. Uh, but look, we're, you know, in, in a week or so, we're going to have Iowa. Uh, we're going to see if Trump wins that, which is I guess he does. And then then we're off to the races here. Then it's going to be a two man race. It's going to be a compare contrast contrast. As Joe Biden says, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. And the alternative is uh, Jeffrey Epstein's buddy. Congressman Moskowitz, thanks as always for joining us here on the Midas Touch Network. And thanks for what you've been doing in that oversight committee hearing on Capitol Hill. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.